This video is sponsored by Adobe. Hello everyone, I'm Charles Nix. I am a creative type director at Monotype, which is the largest type company <laughs> in the history of the world. I've designed hundreds of books and I've composed countless pages of type and headlines and I've always had in my mind a sort of ideal of what the type should look like, or a set of ideals probably. Um, and I'm going to leave that development and those ideals aside for a second, and I'm going to jump right into a recipe for better type um, through hyphenation and justification in um, Adobe InDesign. And I'll do that by starting with this block of text. So this is a block of text in English. Uh, in InDesign, and it's justified. It is not bad. When you start a new document in InDesign, it automatically populates the text box with Minion Pro, which is an old style typeface, really suitable for reading an extended text, great for books. But on this measure, that is on this line length, at this size, you can see some rivers developing. Now rivers are alignments of spaces within the text that create a vertical rhythm where there shouldn't be one. So we see these spaces lining up here and you start to see white lines appearing vertically within the text that let you know that the word space is too loose in this instance. So I'm just gonna show you exactly how to correct that. Go to paragraph, I'm gonna open up hyphenation first. So words with at least Five letters is the automatic default. I'm going to change it to seven. I like hyphenation in words that have seven characters or more. After first, what this means is how many characters are going to appear before a hyphen. I like three. I don't like things like this AC hanging out by itself. So if I change this to a three, that should disappear. Let's preview it. Yes, you see it disappear. And same thing for after. So before last is how many characters in a hyphenated word must appear after the hyphen. And then for hyphen limit, definitely not three because then you get stacks along the right-hand margin. So I'm going to knock that down to two. The rest of the stuff I'm just going to leave as is. So minimum word length for hyphenation is seven characters, three characters before a hyphen, three characters after a hyphen, and then no more than two lines in a row with hyphens. All right, so that does not improve the situation very much. Actually, it makes it worse because I've taken away some of the tricks that the program is using in order to create a more even texture, namely the hyphenation scheme. I'm going to make this text a little more um, even by using the justification settings. So I've just changed the hyphenation settings and now I'm gonna go up to here to justification. The first thing I want to do is describe to you what's going on in each of these three rows and columns. The first is word spacing. The desired word space in most typefaces is too wide. I'm going to change that desired word space to something less, and I'm going to push the minimum and the maximum in other directions too. So I'm going to start with something like an 85% of what the type designer recommended for the word space. And down here, I'm going to knock that 15% below that. So I'm going to let it close up quite a bit beyond that. So I'll take this to 70. And I don't like overly wide word spaces, so I'm going to pump this up to just 100%. So what that's going to do is say that the maximum word space is uh, exactly what the type designer recommended. So I've spaced them 15% apart from one another. And I should get a more even texture almost immediately. So let's do a preview. There you go. So a little bit better texture there. You can see some of the overly wide word spaces are gone. Back to letter spacing. So the letter spacing is something as a type designer that I've considered very carefully. And you'll find that generally speaking in, in typefaces for use in text, that the letter spacing is really carefully considered. So you don't want to subtract from the word spacing. You want to keep it at the desired. But we could allow the word spacing to flex a little bit. In old-fashioned typesetting terms, this was referred to as 
alternate justification. So true justification is just using the word space in order to justify the type. Alternate justification uses word space and letter spacing. So if I knock this down, it's going to upset the flow of the text. But I can open up the letter space on the maximum by 2%. And I can get something that will be a little bit more even without drawing attention to itself. Now this last bit is the part that a lot of typographers and type designers have a problem with. Changing the actual shape of the glyphs by scaling them horizontally. So, I mean, generally speaking, we would want to keep these exactly as they are. But I'm here to tell you that we live in a time of flexible digital type. And there are amounts of glyph scaling that you can do that will improve the color of the text pretty dramatically, but are still invisible. And that magic number is 2%. So if I allow the minimum to go down to 98% and the maximum to go up to 102, I should see, again, a pretty dramatic change in the texture of the type. So these settings, you know, 70, 85, 100, and 2% extra maximum on the letter spacing, glyph scaling 2% less and 2% more, will improve the texture of the type pretty dramatically. All right, already considerably better than what it was before. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.